I know there was a call or two going, what the hell's going on over there? Because uh, mm-hmm. we did give away so much. Uh, but I was, but I believe me, it made me very happy. But this time, this uh, season, we're going to use actual sharks are the contestants. What's up, everyone? Tanya here with popculture.com. And today we are welcoming everyone's favorite. He's an actor, comedian, television host, foodie, and now the chief happy hour officer of Q Mixers. Joel McHale is here with us, everyone. Joel, thanks so much for joining us. And thank you for addressing me by my uh, formal title, the CHO. Congrats. Uh, CHOO, some would say. But uh, mm-hmm. yes, uh, nice to see you again. It's been a few months. Uh, yeah. You're, you're, you continue to have the greatest background of all time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, we have so much to talk about. We just, we spoke last in March and um, you were filming actually in Atlanta for Stargirl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, now that I think you're back home, I remember the other setting is usually, I feel like it's your panic room, but now you're somewhere else. So I think you've gotten out of the panic room. I'm not sure where you are. Yeah, this yeah. is my at, this is my Atwater panic room. Okay, perfect. Uh, <laughs> Atwater, for those of you uh, who don't know what Atwater is, it is a uh, neighborhood in Los Angeles. Oh, perfect. Okay, so how have you been doing since we last spoke? Uh, well, things, thankfully, people are getting vaccinated and... Uh, all the, the numbers are dropping, so things are starting to open up, and um, it's wonderful. So I'm very happy, and I hope uh, now the CDC just approved 12 to 15-year-olds, so thank God I can get the uh, – one of my kids is vaccinated, one will, one's about to be, so uh, very happy and happy for kids to go back to school and drinking uh, Q mixers and uh, promoting um, uh, the Crime Scene Kitchen, so very yeah. excited. Yeah, so you know, there's so much reason to celebrate. You are the C O O. What is it? Chief, sorry, C H H O. It's yeah, it's very, it's a very chief different. happy yeah. hour officer. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what can you tell us about the role and your partnership with Q Mixers? Thank you for asking. Uh, well, I I've been asked to be a part of different brands, and uh, I mean, sometimes I'm like, I have no idea what that is, and then I then I'm like, and no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but this is an actual brand that I had in my fridge. And so I was like, absolutely. And I love the idea of how it came together because it just seems so obvious that uh, like, well, you would want a quality mixer in a quality spirit. So why would you ruin a perfectly good shot of high quality gin with some lame mixer that's going to go flat in seconds and then you're drinking sugar water alongside of a really nice gin which ruins it so uh jordan who started the company literally was sitting at the bar was like i should make a high quality tonic and that was the jumping off point and now it's here and now we're here and uh i just I, you know we live in the golden age of bars and bar scene and mixed drinks and beer and wine and so it follows that the mixers would be good. So um, I, I use it in mine and it doesn't go flat and it t- the quinine tastes great when you're having a, a gin and tonic. So, uh, but I think like their ginger beer is great, their club soda, their cola. So I, I, I know that I uh, sound a lot like a spokesperson, but I re- I'd be saying this if I, I wasn't a part of it. So um, yeah, there you go. I, I, I just, like Jordan's story is really really cool and I, it, he really is like one of the guys he was going around new york with he, like boxes of it going like just try it and then people are like great i'll buy it and uh and so he's and he's a really good guy and and that i'm i'm very excited for the because it, it's it's a need that there was need that has been filled thank god yeah and it's such a great product and it's perfect for the season obviously like we've got summer barbecue season coming up we have memorial day coming up at the end of this month um yeah so- you know, we're going to be spending time with family now that we're going back to normalcy. So, you know, what is a drink that you actually recommend or that you created or is a Q mixer uh, signature from the website? Well, thanks for asking. It's right here. Oh, <laughs> look at that. It's the five o'clock fizz. Mm. Uh, just uh, it's uh, some gin, Campari, lime juice and then ginger beer and, with a little uh, orange twist in it. And it's it's perfect for dealing with family members. Course. Wait, no, it's like, yeah, if you have, you know, sometimes the family that you're like, uh, but the immediate family, great. Sometimes, you know, it expands to family that you're like, I think I need to have a, another uh, 
five <laughs> o'clock fizz. Uh, so that's what I like. Um, I like a gin and tonic. Wow. Uh, I like a Moscow mule. What's mm-hmm. yours? Um, so I'm actually this month just going like dry. I'm not doing any alcohol right now, but I have had a mocktail. So I took, it was two parts, pineapple juice, two parts, uh, orange juice. And then I put a little bit of ginger, like a, a little bit of ginger sticks. Like I just cut, you know, chop them up, put them in and I put it with the ginger beer and it tasted really good. And I call it like a sunrise. Cause like the color is like, you know, kind of. Right. Yeah. Cause you can actually see the sunrise, uh, after <laughs> yeah. the, wait, so are, are you just taking a month off or is it going to be an extended just a month. So what will be the like rosé? <laughs> what do you think the first thing back you'll have? Um, I would like to try. Uh, I saw there was this one called a. I think it was like a. Was it something to do with the? It's like a pink drink. It was on the website. I saw it looked really great. It was like grapefruit with the grapefruit in it. There's, I know you. Guys, you mean there's a grapefruit. You mean the there. signature Q Mixers pink drink grapefruit? Something like that. It's called. It's, it's a called, very creative yeah, name. It's a very oh, the pink drink. I'll take a. I'll take the pink drink grapefruit, please. <laughs> yeah, they have like, there, there's a whole bunch of like, you know, uh, you know, on the website, there, there's so many recipes, so everybody can go check them out. We will link it later, but there are like so many different sort of recipes that you can mix with these, yeah. which I think is so fun that you can just get creative and it's a very creative drink that way. And that there's so many, there's cola, there's the club soda, there's the tonic. Ginger beer. beer. Yeah, Ginger there's beer. the tonic, there's the lighter tonic. They got a bunch. And uh, yeah, I, I was telling Jordan, I was like, dude, you got to start making your own compa- I mean, I was just like, you got to, and he was like, well, we'll, we'll just, and he was like, see, we're, he's like, we're going to nail this market, which he already is. But, and I was like, you got to make other stuff. You're so good at it. And uh, I was like, you should make an airplane. Maybe not, but they should get these on airplanes soon. I, if they're not, if they're not already. I think, yeah, they're great. And so, you know, one of the things I also like is you've got some tips and tricks, I'm sure, as the happy hour officer. So what, how, how can we elevate our happy hour, especially since we need it after everything we've been through? <laughs> well, yeah, boy, talk about day drinking. Um, yeah, well, you know, the secret is that it's not that big of a secret is that if you use high quality ingredients and you don't screw up the portions, you're going to be making a pretty good drink. Yeah. So if you have a high quality gin or a high quality bourbon and you want to, you know, like you, you've, you've got tonic, you got like a Q mixer tonic water and some lime, mm-hmm. it's going to be good unless you really, unless you're like, and then I put it into the stove top and heated it up for 20 minutes. And I was like, don't do that. Put it in a glass with ice. Uh, so it's those little things that you can do to make, you know, from like a super lame drink to, you know, I want this every day. Um, that, that's how, that's how I see it. Like when people are like, well, how do you make a good steak? I was like, well, start with a good steak and then don't overcook it. And you're going to, and make sure you get some salt on there and you're probably going to be in a pretty good spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's how I would say it. So when you're coming up with your drinks and like, cause it's such a fun thing to like do, you can get creative with everything. Do you have any like, um, tips for culinary pairing, especially like if you're having a steak, what would you like to go with it? If you're having fish? Oh, yeah, I mean, steak obviously goes with red wine, which is not a Q mixer. <laughs> uh, but I think a steak also goes with a gin martini. Mm-hmm. Something, um, I think that enhances the flavor. Uh, I think also, like lighter stuff like the um, the five o'clock fizz, that can go with anything barbecued. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I get like, I, I, I also associate it with weather. Yeah. So things like I, I like for whatever reason, I like a Manhattan when it's a little cooler out, even though it's a drink with ice in it mm-hmm. uh, and a Moscow mule I associate with summertime. I probably I could mix those up and this winter have a Moscow mule. So uh, so I would say, you know, like bourbon drinks with fish, probably not the greatest mm-hmm. unless the fish unless the fish <laughs> is deep fried because that that bourbon can be pretty flavorful. But, you know, like a vodka or gin drink. Great. Uh, cause uh, gin, gin is just beautifully juniper. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, I am not the greatest chef, but I can cook the hell out of a piece of meat. So yep. watch out. I know. And you know, I love how this ties so well into crime scene kitchen, which is right, that's called a transition. Nice job. <laughs> so that is premiering on May 26th. And yep. what a fun show. Like first I was thinking like Fox would come up with like the mask chef and like, it'd be people like, 
in costumes cooking but then this is like even right. better so like ken can have his mask costume shows and you can have this one <laughs> so i mean it's great yeah if if they were wearing masks while like the big mask singer mask while cooking somebody's gonna chop a finger off yep because <laughs> they can they can barely they can barely see uh yeah this one is you know obviously there's a lot of baking shows out there mm -hmm. But I think this one's unique because you don't know what you're going to make. Yeah. And you will go into this kitchen and there's some evidence left behind of something that's been baked there. You got two minutes mm -hmm. to search for it. And then they're like, all right, you have four hours. Come up with it. And we have a bunch of really highly trained bakers and then a bunch of self-taught. And you would be amazed at how close they got. Uh, to some of the recipes and then of course how way off they were mm -hmm. uh and so there's some master like i had desserts i was like this is the best thing i've ever had this is right here is the best dessert and then other was where i was like i don't know if this is edible can we can we like can we drink egg whites is that okay mm -hmm. uh so the highs are really high and some of the lows are pretty low but the skill level like the way that people came to play and you're kind of not sure you it does, it's not revealed until the end what the actual thing was yeah. and then you got yolanda gamp who is the queen of the world for cakes and i highly recommend her instagram page and then of course the very uh, the annoyingly handsome curtis stone who shouldn't be as perfectly uh who, he's like so good on television and he's a really successful world famous chef so they're the judges and I am, of course, the Yahoo host who is dressed like a lumber sexual. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw the previews and you're like you are really like getting in there. You're like getting onto like the contestants and like kind of getting them off their their game, which is fun. Um, I, can't I yeah, I like to mix it up with not just the regular like, what are you working on? Yeah. With this money, because you you can win a hundred grand. I was like, would mm -hmm. the money mean a lot to you? So I'm just like, I like to go. Hey, mm -hmm. where'd you get that shirt? And <laughs> uh, that's those are the questions I like asking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things I think is so interesting about the show and that when we see your social media and your Instagram, you are a big griller, but, you know, I mm -hmm. don't really see a lot of dessert on your feed. So are yeah. you, you have a sweet tooth and like, do you like baking? Have you, <laughs> can I imagine? You uh, all right. I, I do have a sweet tooth. Okay. I, and I want to say like, don't like baking. I'm just not good at it because okay. baking the level of expertise it takes to get all of it right mm -hmm. is the same as it is building uh, like an like a helicopter. Uh -huh. you, everything has to come together perfectly. Right. Or it, like, there were, I mean, there was a couple desserts where like you did all this right, this one thing you didn't do right, and that's why it doesn't. It's not great. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just amazing the chemistry and the coordination it takes for a good dessert. I'm for real for a good bake. And I'm not saying that as now go watch the show, but I uh, no, I have people have been joking. They're like, Oh yeah, you love desserts. Don't you? I do. I, but I have to be strategic about it. I am not a person to be like, and now I'm going to eat an entire pie each day. I wish I could. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I my in my twenties. I could, but uh, I really do. I, I was eating like 9,000 calories a day on this baking show and i kept going thank you jesus thank you for this opportunity i cannot believe i get to do this because it was also good uh but i have to be very i'm not one of those people like no dessert for me i'll have some oh yeah but uh i i, I can't have it every day mm -hmm. no dessert's good that's why i was like you know i was surprised because your feet is never really of desserts like here's the meat here's the fish and it's like it's all just really hearty food and then i was like Joel, yeah. like dessert <laughs> I was like, That's yeah perfect. well yeah and i think they were like hey let's have somebody who with fresh eyes who doesn't really know because mm -hmm. i didn't know the difference between all the different like italian creams or french creams and american cream that, that that you put on cakes i was just like tell me exactly how this is different and how because they're so close and boy if you use a French cream instead of an Italian cream in something, it makes all the difference, even though they're pretty close. Um, and then I don't even know you could cook the eggs. I mean, I it, it cooked the eggs in this one cream that was, and then all of a sudden you're tasting omelet. So it's, <laughs> if, if you screw it up, but um, yeah, I'm such a food fan because um, mm -hmm. we never dreamt about food like this. I mean, my mom was a really good cook on top of all that, but, um, but we just never dreamt of it. Yeah.
And, you know, I like to think of this summer as the summer of Joel, because not only do we get <laughs> <laughs> crime scene. Me kitchen, too. Right. We get crime scene kitchen. Uh, we get card sharks also on June. Card 16th. sharks. Yeah. That is back. Um, so you guys gave away so much money last year. Is that going to happen again this year? Like, is it double or. I'm assuming ABC is worried about it. Um, <laughs> I know there was a call or two going, what the hell's going on over there? Because uh, mm -hmm. we did give away so much. Uh, but I was, but I believe me, it made me very happy. But this time, this uh, season, we're going to use actual sharks for the contestants. Oh, that's awesome. So that's going to be a little dangerous. Maybe. Yeah, a little horrific at some points. But um... yeah, we put three feet of uh, salt water in the studio and now they're competing and turning cards over. It's exciting. That is exciting. So um, the setup also, are we going to have an audience in this, like a little bit more of an audience now that we are going back to normalcy or is it? Still no, we, sh we shot these a while ago. So it's still okay. very, no audio. I think, boy, I wonder if crime scene, cause we didn't have one for crime scene. And I don't know if we could, cause the bakes take a while, mm -hmm. but no, uh, if, uh, if card sharks comes back, then um, I'm sure it'll be one of those things where you show like a vaccination card and then we can all be in the same room. Yeah. And, you know, before I let you go, uh, I am having so much fun with you. It's always like such a pleasure talking to you, but um, oh, bless you, <laughs> you know, so I think it's safe to say that you live for trolling Ken. Um, you know, there's been mm -hmm. also speculation that you have you are actually Cloodle do on The Masked Singer. So I'm not going to ask you to confirm or deny, but I will ask you have any thoughts about it or what people think. I might be. I mean, uh, let's all agree that Cloodle. We, what's his name? Koodle do? I don't. I can't even. Koodle do. <laughs> I mean, I, I would like to say the greatest singer in mass singer history. Let's go with that, right? Uh huh. He's the guy who gives. Uh, the <laughs> so I mean, he's not really. Right. I mean, the way he sounds, right? Uh huh. He's a good. He sings, right? No. Nope. <laughs> I don't know how mass singer works. Uh, <laughs> he's supposed to be like some sort of like, like guy. He just comes in and he gives clues and he gives them a hard time and he's like. He's aging Ken, basically, because Ken just can't really get the clues right. Yeah, he's never gotten it right when you think about it. Uh, I don't know how he remains on that show. Um, yeah, no, I I cannot say. I cannot confirm or deny anything. Okay. Uh, but I will say Ken Jeong, um, his, his wardrobe really needs, he needs to stop wearing all the, satin leather letterman jackets because yeah um yeah, uh, grease called and would like their coats back <laughs> yeah i think he would listen to you i hope he would listen to you who knows his, sty um, his stylist is gonna have me shot <laughs> right um well joel you know what it's always so much fun talking to you uh love it as usual you're such, such a pleasure honestly never a chore for more with joel and uh how to get your q mixers and for crime scene kitchen which premieres may 26th tune in to all his projects at popculture.com yes and q mixers will make your summer better everybody <laughs>